Mo Ibrahim Index comes out every year and it has come out for the year 2023. Sadly, it measures that Ghana's Judicial Impartiality Index has dropped by 30% between 2017 and 2023. Now, they've been measuring this every year, okay? Uh, the report indicates that, um, uh, well, it, the report's indicator measures judicial impartiality based on factors such as the independence of the courts, the autonomy of judges, mm. and judicial appointments. Now, in 2014, Ghana's confidence in the judiciary's impartiality was rated at about 95.3 points. The study, however, finds that this has dropped to 68.3 points uh, by 2023. This is a 27-point decline over uh, the period of a decade. Now, uh, they've been examining the trend under the uh, Kufuado administration, uh, which inherited a score of 94.1 points in 2017, uh, briefly rose actually in the following year to 97 points, but then started to, to decline sharply, 75 points in 2018, and continued in a downward trajectory to 68.3 points in 2023. Let's talk about it. We have on the phone uh, the commissioner for the Commission on Human Rights and Administrative Justice, Joseph Wittal. Uh, he's joined by Dr. John Osai Kwapong, who is uh, or, uh, the Democracy and Development Fellow at CDD Ghana. Gentlemen, good morning to you both. Good morning, Kudu. All right. Um, now, um, I, I want to start by understanding what this means, the implications of a steady decline in Ghana's view of its judiciary's impartiality from 2017 to date. Uh, Mr. Whittle, uh, help us summarize that. What are the implications of this decline? Right, thank you, Kudu. Now, if you, if you look at it carefully, this has taken place within the period of one government. Mm. That is the Nana Akufuadu government. The implications for us is that, one, if the independence of the courts within one administrative uh, rule, that is, from 2017 to 2024, can actually come down so steeply, then we have a problem. Again, you do know that in the system we have been talking about you know, perceptions of uh, judicial independence not being the best. But now we have a measurement, a measurement that clearly shows that it's not just about politicians and political actors trying to run down a government, but that there is a major problem with our judiciary. Now the implication is that if we cannot run to the judiciary, if there is any problem within our governance, that is the bulwark of democracy. If there the independence which is supposed, which is given to it to ensure impartiality cannot even be guaranteed, then where else do we go? That is for judicial independence. Because impartiality underscores the basis for giving the judiciary the independence that they require to perform their job. Hmm. Then, you talk about autonomy of judges. If you look at the Constitution very carefully, it is not just judicial independence that is granted to the judiciary, <coughs> but it's actually the autonomy of judges to arrive at decisions regardless of anyone, even within the hierarchy of the judges. If that autonomy cannot be guaranteed any longer, the implications are dire. What does it mean? Does it mean that judges from the top level are able to influence judge judgments below? Does it mean that external factors like the executive can influence the outcomes of, you know, cases in court by particular judges? What does it mean? And the worst part of it is that 
if the sub indicator on judicial appointments is is anything to go by, it means that if the judges do make appointments of judges, uh, sorry, if the president makes the, the appointment of the judges, and there is this nexus between lack of autonomy and lack of independence, then what do we think? Is it that the executives have an influence over the outcomes of cases in court and over judges who are appointed by the executive? What does it mean? It is it's very troubling and it's worrying. And, right. And so when I read the report, I was, I was really not happy because mm. and I do tell you, we know these things were being bandied around. Mm. But in a 30% steep decline, and then the report goes on to say it continues to deteriorate. Yeah. And the Ghana's judiciary is actually the worst in Africa. Hmm. And on top of that, <laughs> I, I don't I don't even know what to say. <laughs> How do we hold ourselves up as uh, the best judiciary in Africa? Uh, our judges have independence. All that is it a sham? Hmm. So that is my concern. Um, uh, what do you think has a? What are some of the events that have occurred during uh, this tenure of this particular government that could have been feeding this decline? Well, I, I wouldn't say it is particular events, but it depends on the, 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 the maybe the forbearing nature of this ex executive trying to influence the judiciary. And one critical thing is that this president has had the longest opportunity to to really appoint judges onto the highest courts. And the Judicial Council, which sadly has some political, you know, uh, membership, has also filled the lower courts to the brim. Mm. So, does it mean that the opportunity to make very critical appointments I, at the last time I checked the Superior Court have been the appointments by the president, the current president are more than any other president ever mm. does that mean that that is the basis for which this deterioration is taking place mm. is he ex 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 exerting some external pressures which we don't know of mm. I think the, we need to sit up Right. Um, you you mentioned the you know the forbearing executive trying to influence the judiciary. Can you uh, explain that a bit more? Well, not not necessarily trying to influence directly, but when you look at the political cases that have come before, maybe the superior courts, particularly the apex court, and you see the unanimity of decision making. It, it, it beats my mind because I, I'm, as a practitioner of about 34 years, I'm used to judgments or opinions that are given by a superior court with judges at least making an attempt to show a difference, even if they're going to support the final judgment. They will still give some differences of how they perceive the issues. But for now, most of the critical uh, political cases, you see unanimity. And no wonder, you remember the Chief Justice and the one Superior Court Judge, Justice Atuguba, retired, both retired, indicating that there's predictability. And this report too has come to highlight the predictab predictability. Well, there must be a basis for that. It means there is some influence somewhere. So I think the time has come for us to really set up, the judiciary must set up. It's not about trying to poo poo people and, oh, there's nothing, we have the independence, we can do this. Look, there is a rot in the system. We need to root it out and do the right thing. One can admit, Commissioner Retal, that no justice system is perfect the world over. Is it your opinion, and you are a lawyer, 
for more than three decades that the very things that are being talked about in this report reflect the reality in our justice system. For example, some people with limited understanding of how justice delivery works may come to some conclusions and perceptions different from you as practitioners, what you think. Do you, from your engagement with those who are still practicing and others, think that the reality is being reflected in this report? Or once again, is misunderstanding, perception, that's often be referenced as some of the causes for these uh, uh, public opinion. You see, uh, let me let me preface it with a point. You see, you remember Chachu Chikata indicated something that there is more rot in the judiciary than our economy. And when he said it, I mean, this is a respected, you know, um, practitioner. I, he taught me and he taught most of the people on the Supreme Court bench. I know that. And for him to make such a comment, it means there is he, he, he was privy to something that I, 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 I may not have been thinking of. But this report has come to show it. Of course, majority of Ghanaians are talking about unanimous FC and, and all that. So when a very respected and credible in this, like the Mo Ibrahim governance report, comes out virtually, even though a perception study, uh, or research, it's virtually, uh, how do I put it, approving or justifying the popular uh, suspicions which is all over the country about the judiciary. So then it means that perception is more like the reality now. And that is why I'm saying, no, we need to look at where we have come from. Our judicial independence has been eroded, even though on paper it is there. So what do we do about that? We need to take practical steps. And maybe, I'm sure in the course of the discussion, we can talk about that. I need to ask this question about what you pointed out. True, President Akufado has more appointees at the Supreme Court. But it's not just mere coincidence. He happened to have been president at the time that a lot more people were retiring. They needed to be replaced. Yes, of course. That is the, the, his prerogative. I fully agree with it. But it's a coincidence. That also coincides with the deterioration. And so we must examine the, 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 the situation. Unfortunately, which has occurred under his regime, having been the one who has appointed the majority of judges to the Superior Courts. Let's talk about fixing the problem. When Chief Justice um, Getu Chokoni came in, she embarked on a project to make justice accessible to people. Are you saying that it is too early to assess the impact of this project on the justice delivery system, or we need more than just what she has started to fix the current problem with our judiciary? I'm one of those who welcome the, 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 the improvement that the current CJ Chief Justice is bringing to the system talk about digitalization and, and all that. But attitudes and behaviors take long to change. And that is what we are confronted with. Mu Ibrahim has been coming every year. But even though she has started this uh, reforms about a year or two ago, we are not seeing the manifestation. In fact, we are seeing a deterioration. So that is what the report points out. And, and that is what I meant by let us not uh, put our heads in the, the, the sun as ostriches, but meet it head on, because too many negative things are happening to our courts, and we need them to be pristine, to be able to be bulwarks of democracy that anyone can run to when there are problems with the other arms of government. Where do we start from, Commissioner Vital? Do we start from the appointment of judges, or start from attempting to clean up the current system as it's operating? Right. I'll give you an example or two. One, it starts with the Constitution. If you look at Kenya, when Kenya changed their Constitution or amended it 
drastically somewhere around 2010. Our own Chief Justice then, uh, Mrs. Georgina Wood, was made to be a panel member of the, 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 the panel that sat on judges, in fact, sitting judges, to re-interview them and see their suitability. And quite a number were dropped, and the others were kept on. Beyond that, their system does not have this one-man show that we have in Ghana, where the president appoints almost everybody in the political class, including judges. No. They have panels that are transparent. Civil society is on it. Critical opposition is on it. And others who sit and ordinary Ghanaians or Kenyans will then apply. And on the basis of merit and transparency, you are appointed so you can defend your record. But how do we know who, what happens in Ghana? Who gets appointed as a judge? When you have very, very intelligent judges on the Court of Appeal left behind and others brought up to the Supreme Court, what happens? What went on there? Is there merit? We need to look at that. And so for me, I think, going forward, we've talked about constitutional review. The constitutional review must address this issue of appointment of judges by the president of Ghana to make it more transparent, more uh, merit-based. That's one. You know the South African situation. Mm. If you go through X, you see appointment being made to the judiciary, but based on a judicial commission that is very, very transparent. You apply, you go, you, you, you appear before them. If you don't make it, you are out. And that is how we should begin to look at Ghanaian situation. What is happening is not, it's not, it's not, it's not healthy. We need to change the dynamics. Uh, there are some who suggest that the solution to this is not really any sweeping reforms, that our judicial service is actually fit for purpose. All we need to do is work on the perception. Uh, and, I mean, they cite the Afrobarometer's uh, co co corroborating evidence as, as their reason for this. I, I think, according to the Afrobarometer, uh, in 2017, uh, the c corruption perception index for our judiciary was at 57%. It's now at 36%. So some, you know, 21 percentage point drop, which kind of is close enough to the Mo Ibrahim mm -hmm. index. So the suggestion is that the problem is perception and that we should work on just that. What do you think of it? Could you, the problem is not perception. Where we have reached now, if you do triangulation of all the researches that have come up so far, clearly we have a governance deficit. When it comes to the judiciary, as I said, let's not put our heads in the sand as ostriches. We have a problem on hand. Judicial independence is meaningless if impartiality is not guaranteed. Hmm. What is the use? If autonomy of judges can be ridden roughshod, and you can see from the type of judgments that come out, I, I am I'm, I'm an actor in the, 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 the system, and I follow very clearly. And we need to give critical, you know, constructive criticism to the judiciary if we need our democracy to nurture and grow. What is happening is not what used to happen during the period of Justice Akwa and Go, who were chief justices. We need to sit up. This is a problem. And that is the point I, 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 I meant by that. It's no longer perception. This perception and reality are virtually the same yeah. now. I want to say a big thank you to you, uh, Mr. Joseph Wittell, for your time with us this morning. My pleasure.
Um, Joseph Wittal is the commissioner uh, of the Commission on Human Rights and Administrative Justice.